We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, it's the governments that are instituted deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. You know, here at YWCP, we have, you know, the New York State curriculum, but we also have this side curriculum that we are basically teaching our students skills in order to leave here as confident leaders. You know, we help them develop uh, abilities to have relationships and build relationships, teaching them to have a voice, not just a voice, you know, with a the teachers but a voice within their peers as well, building relationships and how to communicate and how to develop relationships among females because, you know, female relationships is where they're going to build a, a huge connection. I think this field trip that we just went on to Seneca Falls was an absolute amazing experience for my girls. Um, they were able to have literally a first-hand account of the women that we talk about in the classroom and they were able to see firsthand. It's given them like almost a little uh, power boost um, to see that like these women are here, they have a, you know, a, a National Hall of Fame dedicated to them um, and that it just is giving them a whole greater aspect of, you know, uh, that they can make a difference and that eventually they will make a difference. I know they will. One of the things I want to emphasize is uh, underlying connection between the National Women's Hall of Fame and YWCP. They have a shared ambition, a shared goal. When you read through 276 biographies and you see the obstacles and the resilience and everything else that women uh, demonstrate in order to follow their dreams, get the goals accomplished, help transform the world we live in. You also get a thin slice of what it must be like as a student at YWCP. Because there, yes, education's important, but educating the whole person is important. And that's exactly what you learn when you come to the hall. That it's not a piecemeal education, it's an investment in the entire person and understanding what that means for transforming our world. Women only make 80 cents to every dollar that a man makes, and it's even lower for Hispanics, and it's even lower for African Americans as well. So they're still, you know, like Miss Jarvis, is, is that still today? I'm like, guys, that's that's still today. Like right now, like 2018, we are not making the same amount of money a, as a man, and so we're definitely challenging how they uh, are thinking about things. And that's one of the greatest aspects as as a teacher is being able to challenge your students and then see that light bulb go off in their head and then have them make a connection back to their lives. YWCP has helped me find my voice and I know when I graduate and go out to the community, I know I'll be a stronger person. The struggles I went through was giving up, not having faith and hope, but now I have faith, now I have hope and yes, I think YWCP has helped her find her voice because now she speaks up and um, when she needs help, she acts for it. And learning to be independent and reaching for the stars. They are literally the, you know, the founders of this possibility that uh, what an all-girls education could do for girls, especially in the urban education setting. You know, they are the groundbreakers and they literally are, you know, the next, just the next step and next generation away from making a difference. There's the story of the whole person. It's like the education of the whole person. And that's what you learn at YWCP, that you have to think about the education of the whole person. And I think investing in women's education is exactly the way to ensure that we transform the United States. All right guys, so I actually have a copy of the Declaration of Sentiments, uh, and all 100 signers are down below. So you guys read the first part up here and we remember how we talked about this in class and we broke it down and we compared it with the Declaration of Independence, right? Especially that, those first few lines up there, uh, very powerful lines. Like they were powerful when they wrote the Declaration of Independence because it literally started a rebellion. 
right, a revolution. And this did the same exact thing. It literally started a rebellion and a revolution that we're still continuing to fight even today, all right? So you guys are those rebellious leaders that are taking this on further, okay, and carrying this further in your lives. In entering upon the great work before us, we anticipate no small amount of misconception, misrepresentation, and ridicule. But we shall use every instrumentality within our power to affect our object. We shall employ agents, circulate tracts, petition the state and national legislators, and endeavor to enlist the pulpit and the press in our behalf. We hope this convention will be followed by a series of conventions embracing every part of the country, firmly relying upon the final triumph of the right and the true. We do this day affix our signatures to this declaration.